Next on the news, after two years, we are almost at the culmination of the Eucharistic revival, the National Congress in Indianapolis. A Queens priest credits the body of Christ for finding his vocation. But when you approach the Eucharist with an open heart, there's no doubt. An update from one of the perpetual pilgrims traveling across the country with the Blessed Sacrament. Just to see how the Lord, like his graces are truly new every day and it's beautiful to get to continue to witness to that. Plus, a new study shows Catholics actually do believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. We explain the new results. I'm Christine Persichetti. Curse News starts right now. They've been walking across the country and the Emmaus moment is nearly here. The perpetual pilgrims are about to descend on Indianapolis. Whether they are walking, driving, or flying, Catholics across the country are about to arrive at the National Eucharistic Congress. The five-day event is centered around a core Catholic belief that the Eucharist is actually the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Curse News' Katie Vasquez joins us now to tell us a little bit more about Eucharistic adoration. Hi, Katie. Hi, Christine. Yes, adoration can actually change a person's life. You're about to meet Father James Rodriguez. He says that being before the body and blood of Christ made him want to become a priest. Take a look. The supper of the Lamb. Father James Rodriguez consecrates the body of Christ. He says it's his favorite part of the Mass. The priest's job, the priest's vocation, is to give God to his people. And there's nothing better than that. Blessed are you, Lord. It's a job he's done with pride as a priest for nearly 16 years, and for the last four years as the pastor of St. Rose of Lima Church in Rockaway Beach. But even before his ordination, the body of Christ has been central to his life. Father Rodriguez says his parents always reminded him it is a core part of their faith. It looks like bread and, and doesn't taste, you know, anything like what flesh might taste like, you know, but, but still in all, it's really and truly Jesus. He soon became a minister of Holy Communion at his home parish, Blessed Sacrament Church in Jackson Heights. When he was a teenager and started to discern his vocation, his best friend showed him the Adoration Chapel. It was there praying silently before the Blessed Sacrament that he got a literal call to the priesthood. This older woman praying, uh, turned to me and said, you should be a priest. You know? And I said, well, thank you very much. And then I went right back to my prayer. Lord, please be clear, be clear, tell me clearly. You know, and I had to chuckle, of course, because he just did. Now, as Catholics across the country are coming together for the body of Christ, he hopes those who may be lost can find themselves in Jesus's real presence in the Eucharist. When you approach the Eucharist with an open heart, there's no doubt. According to a recent survey, up to 75% of young men claim Eucharistic adoration contributed to their vocation. Christine? Wow, Katie, and now you're going to the National Eucharistic Congress. So tell us what our viewers can expect. Well, there's about 80,000 people expected to fill Lucas Oil Stadium, and there's going to be plenty of Catholic speakers, musicians, and lots of activities, seminars, and it should be a great thing. And, of course, they're going to have a lot of Eucharistic adoration and Mass for everyone to really reflect, and it should be a great event. It really should be. Thanks so much, Katie. That Congress will be the culmination of the nationwide pilgrimage happening right now. For the last seven weeks, about two dozen young people have been traveling from four corners of the country with the body of Christ. And eventually, they will all converge on Indianapolis. Let's look at one of the most recent stops of the Seton route, which is coming from the east and actually passed through the Diocese of Brooklyn. The pilgrims recently walked through Ohio, where they stopped at a correctional institution. They celebrated mass with 35 incarcerated men, 25 of whom participated in a procession. The pilgrims also got to speak with the men and share each other's testimonies. The Seton Route is the first group to reach Indianapolis. They traveled through 18 dioceses in eight states, and we've been checking in with one of those pilgrims, New Yorker Zoe Dongas, all along the way. As her journey comes to a close, she says this has been an awe-inspiring experience. It's definitely changed me. We've been We've been realizing that we need a lot of time to debrief just like everything that's happened. It's just been really powerful to be in adoration for so much of the day. 
to just spend so much time with Jesus. And I feel like he's been moving in my own heart really personally in a lot of different areas of my heart that I um, didn't realize that he wanted to continue to heal or continue to work in um, and like reveal new things about himself to me. Um, but it's also just been so beautiful to see yeah, how he's been transforming the hearts of everyone we've passed and everyone we've seen um, in so many different dioceses. Um, just to see how the Lord, like his graces are truly new every day and it's beautiful to get to continue to witness to that. Zoe also says in every diocese she's passed, she's seen people getting excited to walk with Jesus. The Eucharistic revival that sparked that nationwide pilgrimage and the Congress happening soon began because of a 2019 Pew Research study that caught the bishop's attention. It found about 69% or two thirds of U.S. Catholics said they do not believe the bread and wine become Christ's body and blood and that they are just symbols. A more recent study, however, found that may not be the case. The Catholic firm Vinia Research says it's actually the opposite. Their study says 69% of mass going Catholics do believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Here to explain these new findings is Hans Plate, the founder of Vinia Research. Hi, Hans. Hello, Christine. Good to be here. I'm glad to have you here. So let's get to the bottom of this. Why are the numbers so different between your study and the one done by Pew Research? Well, I, I think it fundamentally comes down to the way the question was asked. So Pew's wording was around the phrase actually becomes, right? So they were saying, or the options they gave were that the bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And when we first noted that language, when they came out with the study in 2019, it kind of struck us as just being very different from anything that we've heard uh, through Catholic teaching or what comes out of the, the catechism or the USCCP's document. And so we use slightly different language that we felt aligned better with what Catholic teaching was, which is using the phrase either truly present or real presence. And in our, our structure of the question, we use the term uh, truly present. So Jesus is truly present uh, in the bread and wine, uh, as opposed to being actually, you know, the, the bread and wine actually becoming. Uh, the body and blood. So that that was one area um, where I think there was a major difference between the two the two studies that that was conducted. Um, the other is that we wanted to make sure that the response options that people had to select from were mutually exclusive, uh, because technically uh, the bread and wine are symbols, but they're not as the as the the U.S. bishops say they're not merely symbols. So there's a symbolic um, element component to them, uh, but it's more than that. And so that's one of the things that we you know, corrected in our study as well. And so we saw uh, a pretty, pretty significant change from what we saw in 2019. It really comes down to wording there. As we just reported, it's been two years since the Eucharistic revival began. And with the Eucharistic Congress just a week away, why are the results of the Vinia study so significant now? Well, I, th I think um, I think if you want to measure uh, a topic as nuanced and complex as belief in the real presence, I think it's really important to just be as accurate as possible and use the correct language. Um, I think the there is still the issue of whether or not people do truly and, and have a deep understanding and belief in the real presence. So even in our study, for example, we show that 51% of Catholics that go to Mass just once or twice a year believe in the real presence, but obviously they're not going to Mass. So what is the depth uh, of that belief? And I think that's something that ab ab absolutely needs to be uh, corrected through all the activities that the uh, Congress and, and the Revival are having. Absolutely. So will you be doing any other follow-up studies after the Eucharistic Congress? You know, what are your plans for the future? Yes. Well, so we're, we're in the midst of um, designing a new survey around the kerygma and, and Catholics' belief around the kerygma, and we will certainly be asking some questions around the real presence. Not, not so much with the goal of comparing our results to uh, pews, but just really in trying to get an understanding of what, what Catholics do believe on the subject, because, like I said, it's a nuanced uh, uh, topic that needs to be addressed a little bit differently, I think. All right. Looking forward to that. Hans Plate, founder of Vinia Research, thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me, Christine. To learn more about all things related to the National Eucharistic Pilgrimage and Congress, just go to eucharisticrevival.org. That is this current news update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.